Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at contact us forms and lead generation and different ways that you can display those forms on your website. My favorite method is using a modal and today we're going to be looking at the Bricks Extras modal. Uh, some people might call it a pop-up or a light box or something like that, uh, but that's my favorite way to prompt people to fill out a form. So in this tutorial, we're gonna look at the Bricks Extras modal, and let's check it out right now. It's tied to this button right here that says free estimate on this homepage. And when you click it, the form pops up. It's got everything uh, we wanna capture from the user, and it doesn't redirect you to another page. You can close it and go right back to scrolling around the page. So that's a really nice uh, feature with the modal because it keeps the user on the page you're on. A quick note about uh, Bricks Extras, I'm not affiliated with Big Bricks Extras. I'm not being paid or earning commissions or anything. I just really like their toolkit and use it on all my client sites. The uh, developers are awesome, support's awesome, and their product is just really worth the investment and saves a ton of time. Uh, so after that, let's close that down and go check out the other method, which is a contact us page. And this is also a great way to do it, but the downside is it redirects the user to another page. So if you have a slow connection, something happens, uh, it doesn't load fast enough, you might have the user bounce and go somewhere else, where once the page is loaded up uh, on this home page here, that modal is loaded on the page and is available to you, so no redirection or anything like that. A couple other notes about the uh, Bricks Extras modal, it's uh, keyboard accessible and has all of the accessibility tags in the HTML. Uh, so once you open it, you can tab to the close button and hit enter. You can hit enter when you're focused on the button and open it. You can hit the escape key, so it's fully accessible with the keyboard, which is really awesome. And so is the Fluent form, so that's really nice too. So accessibility is important to me and helping people that use uh, things other than mouse on their website. So let's dive into the builder and the WordPress backend and take a look at how this works. So I'm gonna hop over to the Bricks Extras uh, elements here, and I'm gonna be using their Fluent form and modal element. You just click them on here and click Save and they're automatically available in the builder. I'm gonna go quickly and remove some of the settings here that I have set up to make all this work and build it all from scratch. And I'm just gonna blow this modal away and start over. So a quick note, I am going to put this modal in my footer template. That way it's available on any page I want. If I didn't want it on every page, I might be more specific and put it maybe uh, on the home page only or in a service template or maybe somewhere that it wasn't uh, accessible all over the site. But for my use case, I want it everywhere. So I'm gonna put it in the footer and this footer applies globally site-wide. Uh, let's look at the template settings, entire website. So that will make this modal available uh, to the entire website. So that's really important. If you were to put this modal on a single page, it's only accessible uh, on that one page. But again, by putting it here, it's accessible and usable on the entire website. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add the component onto this uh, footer template. So click on elements. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the section called extras. And this is where all of the bricks extras uh, components are stored and since we only turn those two on on the back end they are the only ones available here so i'm going to add this modal and it stuck it inside that section and i just want to drag it out of the section so it's just sitting on its own and then i also want to add the fluent form and make sure that it is inside the modal so if it's outside the modal, that's no good. You wanna make sure you grab it and drag it inside the modal like that. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is add a heading and bring that to the top. 
and add a global class to that called modal underscore underscore heading, which has some styles on it already. It's a uh, text extra large if you're an automatic CSS user, and then I centered everything up and then gave it just a little bit of space underneath. Not a ton of styles there. For the fluent form, I want to add a class that's called modal underscore underscore form. And then let's style this up a little bit before we get into the modal settings. So I'm going to get all the styles set, and then we'll go look at the awesome settings on this modal element. So I'm going to go to the submit button first. And with the fluent form, uh, component here, you can access all of the styles to Fluent Forms. It's really handy and style it in the builder. You don't have to go back to uh, the Fluent Form designer and use their tools. You can just use the Bricks Extras tools, which, man, saves a ton of time. So I'm going to go to the Submit button and work on that first. And I'm going to add a background, uh, this primary color. And we're going to go and add a color to the typography and just make sure it's white and force that style there. And then I'm going to add a width of 100% to stretch it all the way across. And for fun, we're going to add some border, three pixels all around, solid, and let's do a dark primary ultra dark here. Just to, just to show some of the styling features uh, of this component here. It's really nice. Can add a little padding here. So if we wanted to add just a little bit uh, to the top and bottom, you can make it a little bigger. Or we can just go with the defaults. I kind of like whatever out of the box defaults are. It's not uh, too crazy there. Uh, but the point is you do have access to all those styles here. I think that's good enough for me. Um, Let's see, is there anything else? Maybe the asterisk color just for fun. We'll make it this uh, primary green color and you'll see those will change as well. Just to show that it's uh, required there. Kind of go along with the theme here. And that's all there is to it on the styles. The next part is the cool part, I think. And that is the trigger and reshow and how we're going to get this modal to pop up. So these aren't styles. These are going to be uh, settings to this uh, component here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to trigger and reshow and add a new trigger to this modal. And then you give it a nice name here. So this will be uh, show modal on click or whatever you want to call it. And then when you type uh, click on your trigger type, you can see all the different kinds you have here or settings. So I'm gonna do on click, which is the click plus keyboard accessible. And then it pops up the element selector and I will put dot show dash modal. That's gonna be my selector. And anytime I put that on any clickable element, it will trigger this modal to pop up. So these settings are really all you need to get the modal to pop up when you click on a button or any other element that you want to trigger this modal. So before we dive into any of the other settings, I'm going to grab this class, everything but the dot. You don't need the dot, just show modal. I'm gonna save real quick and then head over to my home page where I have this button called free estimate. The contact us button is the redirection to the other page, but this button doesn't do anything. It's just an HTML tag button, doesn't do anything. It's just a button, you can click it to do things. So I'm gonna add my class show modal and then hit save. And what that's gonna do is say, anytime we interact with this button, we want it to show that modal. So let's go to the front end and refresh and hit free estimate and now our uh, custom modal pops up and shows our contact us form with all of our styles. Let's go delete this, hit save, and then refresh, and nothing should pop up now. So it doesn't do anything. 
And that's all you have to do. Anything you put this show modal class on, so you have to be careful. You can't really use this selector for styles. Uh, I would only use that as the trigger. So if you were to use it as a style somewhere, that could have some unintended consequences and show your modal when you didn't want to. So reserve that only for the trigger. So with this trigger here, we can add multiple triggers. And so this one's going to be exit. Uh, let's see, show on exit. And that means when anybody is going to try to leave the page, it's going to pop the modal up. So we can add that trigger and go and refresh. So now when we click it, it works. But then when our mouse starts to leave the page, it should trigger it to pop up too. Just to say, hey, one last chance to try to grab that customer or user on your website to get them to convert and do what you want them to do on your website. So I really like to use exit intent pop-ups uh, sparingly where I really want the person to do something and uh, add that exit intent. It only runs one time though per page. So uh, if you try to re-trigger that again, it's not gonna work on the exit intent. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't like tell it to re-trigger again. Anyways, that's how that works. Um, Another neat trigger is going to be the, uh, what is it called? It's called after time inter inactive. So we'll call this one inactive and just do five seconds. So when I stop moving the mouse for five seconds, so let's move the mouse and then count it down. Five, four, three, two, modal. Awesome. Blast off. Cool. I love that. That's a really neat one too. So if somebody steps away, they have to answer the phone. They might come back to a nice surprise like, hey, maybe you should do what we want you to do and fill this form out. So there's quite a few different uh, triggers here. Another really neat trigger would be the URL parameter. So if you had something like in this, you have this URL parameter here that says bricks run. Uh, you could have your own URL parameters, and if that uh, is included in the URL, you could start by popping that up, like a welcome or a hello, welcome back, uh, here's a 10% off coupon, whatever you want based on some sort of URL parameter. So I think that's a really neat one too. We're not going to use that one though. And that really is all I have to show on the Bricks Extra and Fluent Form elements. I think it's a really great way to help people uh, use your website the way you want them to fill out the forms. You could put a WP Amelia booking form here, a Calendly booking system, or whatever you want inside here. And for most of my client sites, I use these contact forms and uh, booking forms here. Some of the metrics I've captured over the last couple of years doing this, I see a lot more people fill out these buttons than maybe the contact us form in the footer. So if they get to the bottom uh, of the page, it's there, but a lot of times they don't get there and they're clicking around before. So I see a lot of conversions on this style, which is really great uh, and why I prefer it. So if you could give a like and subscribe, uh, that would, help this channel out and also drop in the comments what it is that you're looking to learn and I will see if I can put a tutorial together. Um, Bricks Extra is worth all the investment. I use it on every single client site so can't uh, shout out those guys enough. Uh, thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day. Bye!